Hi everyone and welcome to the Bahamas, one of our favorite cruising destinations. In fact, that's a question we get asked quite a lot, isn't it? What's your favorite place? Yeah. What are your favorite places? So we thought we'd do a series on some of our favorite places for you over the next few episodes. And today we're going to start with France. And the French canals. This time on Distant Shores, we journey up the Seine River in France, dealing with the challenges of navigating this commercial highway. Our route into Paris takes us right through the heart of this historic city, where we explore some of the traditional sites and explore the rarely seen underground side of Paris. I think yes. it was going through France by the canals was one of the things I was most excited about doing when we went to Europe. Our boat was too deep to go through that, and we'll talk about requirements for your boat as well but uh, when we got our first southerly we decided or actually our second mm -hmm. southerly we decided we would try to take it through the French canals and that's what we want to talk about. So today we're going to talk about the trip to Paris. I mean to arrive in Paris with your own boat was just something that we dreamed of doing. Well neither of us had been to Paris no. So that was to be our first trip where we'd come up the river uh, in our own boat and arrive in Paris and that was a very exciting, definitely very exciting. We'll get to that a little bit later. So first of all, I guess the question is, can you take your own boat? And uh, we looked into that carefully. To get up to Paris, you can come up a great big river, the Seine River, uh, and really you could take uh, any boat that didn't have the mast on, but mm -hmm. uh, any width or, or length of boat would be fine. But uh, to get on past Paris and go into the small canals and right across uh, the country, you're gonna need to have a smaller uh, boat with a lesser draft. So the max constraints there are five meters wide for the lock, can only be mm -hmm. five meters, and the draft of about 1.8, 1.85 meters max, uh, which is about five foot eight. So if you're looking at uh, feet, five foot eight, and it's about 16 feet wide. Yeah. And all this information is available on the internet. Uh, check in the description below. We've yeah, got links uh, to the blogs that we did at the time that we did that cruise, which was 2000... 2012. 2012. Yeah. Wow, that long ago. Yeah, Done a lot of miles since then. then. Another boat since then. Yeah. <laughs> On this summer's voyage, we'll be traveling from La Havre on the north coast of France through 1,300 kilometers of historic inland waterways all the way to Port St. Louis on the south coast. On the way, we'll pass through 179 locks and under many bridges. So one of the things you've got to do is if you have a, a lot of boats that go through this are power boats, very well suited to that, again, so long as you've got good fenders and uh, you won't be over the maximum height of 3.5 meters so that's really important because you've got low bridges and tunnels mm -hmm. and whatnot 3.5 meters mm -hmm. and uh, we could easily do that with the mast down so we had to take the mast down and uh, we did that on the river uh, right in La Havre you can do it uh, as you enter the river mm -hmm. and you can do it up at the top in Rouen also. The mast on distant shores is 19 meters long and weighs about 300 kilograms Finding a yard with a mass crane big enough to handle it has been difficult, but a local sailor recommended this yard at Tankerville, just upriver from Larve. Distant shores barely fits into the slip under the mast crane, but the crane is certainly big enough. But we're dealing with a language barrier. Okay, we're not exactly sure what's going on because we don't speak hardly enough French to start discussing mast specifics, and he doesn't speak any English at all. We're trying to lie the mast down and put it on the boat because we are going to go through the French canals and I'm so excited about that. It's unusual for a 49-foot sailboat like Distant Shores to travel through the small canals of France since most sailboats this size are deeper than the 1.8-meter minimum depth of the canals. But Distant Shores has a shallow draft. We're going to be one of the biggest sailboats going through the small canals, so we're making preparations to safely squeeze through the locks, we hope. I tell you, these French are so civilized and so helpful. Now we're taking a lunch break. How good is that? And in that time, for, I get to work on the mast while it's off. That way we can get it all set up and ready, and then he lifts it back on. And they're doing a great job, so excellent. There are a couple of options for dealing with the mast once it's down. 
Having it transported by road to the destination you plan to finish at is the most popular choice. Unfortunately, our mast plus rigging at nearly 20 meters or 65 feet long is too big and heavy for mast transport. This was a surprise due to the language barrier. We'd planned on having the mast transported, so we've had to build supports in a hurry without much time to carefully plan the engineering. This will make maneuvering in the narrow canals and locks a challenge, but having your mast transported can be costly, so this way we'll save some money and be able to keep an eye on our mast for the whole voyage. At a bend in the river, we approach the town of Les Andelys, halfway between the Amphreville Lock and our destination of Vernon. Les Andelys is a magical spectacle, and as if fairy tale villages aren't enough, the most dramatic vision of all appears hovering above us. Look at these beautiful old towns. We are on the Seine River. We finally got going. We've got the mast all sorted. We're heading up the Seine toward Paris. One of the navigational challenges for a recreational boat heading up the Seine is the amount of large ship traffic on the river. We're keeping a good lookout, but our fear is what the ship's wakes will do to the boat, now top-heavy with the mast strapped on deck. We're about to find out. We're creaking! That's exciting! We've built mast cradles before, but never for such a heavy mast as this. Our first test of the mast steps, and they creak a little bit. We're not used to having a little bit of motion and having the mast up like this. That's solid. Sounds exciting though. So probably I think for me I was a little bit nervous about Paris just because we knew that the canal was going to be really busy there. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the concerns when we got into Paris. Uh, but I was still so excited. And, uh, I, and I still get excited thinking about it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And it was funny because we'd been winding our way through all these little canals approaching Paris. And all of a sudden we came around the yeah. corner and there was the Eiffel Tower. It was just... Yeah, that came out of nowhere. That was kind of weird. It did. It really kind of surprised us. Very exciting. Yeah. And I'm so excited I can't believe it. I did not know that you were so close to the Eiffel Tower when you came through Paris on a boat. I mean, this is the standard route in after we've come all the way from the English Channel and up for five days up the Seine. We're right here. Gustave Eiffel designed the tower to be the dramatic centerpiece of the 1889 World's Fair. Welcome to Paris! It was the tallest building ever built and held that title for 41 years until the Chrysler Building was built in New York. The Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is the icon of Paris and France. And today, at over 120 years old, it is one of the most popular tourist attractions in the world, receiving 7 million visitors last year. However, it was only meant to stand for 20 years. Luckily for all of us, it has stayed on. Taking a cruise on the Seine is a popular visitor activity since it gets you up close to the amazing bridges of Paris. Famous for their decoration, they are a tourist destination in their own right. That was Pont Alexandre III, Alexander III's bridge, Pont. It's beautiful. Absolutely spectacular. Maybe a little bit overdone. Okay, so we are... Pont, 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 Alexander, there he is. Check that one off. This is figuring out where the heck we are. It is so busy. This is the part I was a little bit worried about in the morning because there's so many boats. Now there's wakes, it's getting tight. The current is strong under the bridge. And then there's a restricted part where we probably have to wait. Looks like we missed it, so, okay. This takes us right by Notre Dame. I wonder if we'll see the hunchback or whoever that was supposed to be lives here. Notre Dame Cathedral, chiming the whatever this is, quarter to three. 
it's great to have your boat in Paris. It was quite an affordable where, way to stay mm -hmm. there. So we were in a marina called the Arsenal Basin. Uh, that is a great marina, and it's very central. We could walk to the to most of the, the, main, the main highlights in Paris. Yeah. Uh, that was very Beautiful. exciting. Went to the Louvre and Notre Dame. Very sad yeah. to hear about Notre Since Dame. But before the fire, we yeah. were there. Yeah. Yes, of course. But, uh, and you know, we really tried to figure out a way that we could stay there for the winter because many of our cruising friends have wintered in the Arsenal Basin and they have very affordable winter rates. And, yep. you know, you just have all those winter months to explore the sites. Can you and, imagine? Oh, that would uh, be fantastic. Didn't work out, but maybe yeah. there'll be a next time. And then one of the cute little things we found when we were there was right in the Arsenal Basin at the end of the basin, there is the entrance to a tunnel canal that leaves and heads off, uh, I think it's the St. Martin Canal. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's yes, called? So yeah. that was very exciting. We did that at high noon when the sun was coming down through the little skylights that are spread throughout the, uh, the tunnel. So yeah. let's take a look at that. The Arsenal Basin Marina appears to end at the Bastille itself, but appearances are deceiving. It's really the entrance to a two-kilometer tunnel on the St. Martin Canal. We're right underneath the Place de la Bastille, which is such a historic part of France's and Europe's history, where 1789, the workers in took over the prison and invaded where the political prisoners and it was really the beginning of the workers revolution 1789 the place de la bastille and we're in the dungeons isn't that something the saint martin canal was built 200 years ago napoleon bonaparte ordered its construction to provide a source of clean water for paris as there had recently been outbreaks of diseases including cholera as well as clean water, the canal would provide improved access for goods to come into Paris by barge. Today's equivalent of building a new highway with all the problems of a large construction in an already urban setting. 150 years ago, this last two kilometers of the canal was covered over, forming the tunnel. This allowed the streets overhead to connect across the water route without bridges. It's 500 meters to go. We just saw a sign on the wall, so we're three quarters of the way through underneath Paris streets. I wonder how many people even realize there's a canal beneath their feet. Today, the Bastille is identified with the French Revolution and French National Day, also called Bastille Day in English-speaking countries, and commemorates the day Parisians stormed the Bastille back in 1789. The Bastille had been a prison and held political prisoners critical of the monarchy. At the time, there were just seven prisoners, but it was also an armory with guns and gunpowder that could help the revolutionaries. The French Revolution had a huge impact on Europe and the rest of the world. The monarchy that ruled France collapsed, and as France was a major world power, the effect rippled around the world. The Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, and the New Enlightenment principles of equality, citizenship, and inalienable rights. The flashpoint of all this was the storming of the Bastille, 14th of July, 1789. Something is happening. The barge that went in first has now stopped because there's a red signal, which is a bit scary. I'll put us in neutral. Looks like they're tying up, Paul. What's well, there's a red light, so we're stuck in the middle of the tunnel underneath Paris, and now it looks like we have to stop and wait here. We've been under here for almost half an hour, and I'm not sure why, but the other barge ahead oh, of us has lock. stopped. The lock is right here. Thank you. We pull over to the side, and I need to watch our mast overhang, but I think we will clear the low concrete ceiling. 
Could I give you a stern? Thank you so much. This is a surreal experience and definitely the first time I've ever tied up to a dock underground. Yep, bell line attached. This underground basin is larger than a football field and allows vessels to pass each other while waiting for the lock. There is another barge coming behind us, so all three of us must pull over and wait. It's an old Dutch commercial barge that has been beautifully converted to a pleasure craft. Although commercial traffic is much reduced from its heyday when the canal was built, there is still traffic hauling grain amongst other things. Your baguette might be made with grain from the barge that passes us. Join us next time as we head deeper into the heart of France, exploring the historic canals that cross the country and the villages along the way on our journey south towards the Mediterranean. So throw a comment down below if you'd like to do the French Canal someday. And don't forget to turn on notifications. Ring the bell if you'd like to be notified of the next videos in this series.